All right, let's try this again. The devil is a liar. Warrior Wednesdays is back. Without a mention. So the devil was trying to get into the womb and I ain't having it because we have a live to birth. I see y'all coming back into the room because you're faithful like that. Full of faith. I love it. All right, look. I'm going to bring her on because her theme song is on right now. And she's going to tell you a little later why this is her song. But you better be dancing, Jordana, when you get on here. Hey. There we go. Can you hear it? Oh, my God. Can you hear this? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I'm good? Yeah, but can you hear your theme song? I love it. I love it. Listen, we'll get into that for the people. We'll get to it. <laughs> I had to bring you on with that. Okay. All right. Now let me turn this off, y'all. So um, I just had to like lighten the mood a little bit because the devil God. was trying to, the devil was trying to not get the information on you guys. Here is the Daily Show producer, Jordana Hemingway. Welcome to Warrior Hi, Wednesday. Guys. Listen, I mean, <laughs> Wednesday, Warrior Wednesday, we are here. They tried to play me, but you know what? Good things come to those who wait, right? So uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And I'm just so inspired by you and this community that you have um, created because I think this conversation is super important. So I'm just happy to testify. <laughs> yes, I'm so happy to have you testify. This is the most beautiful tribe of women and men. We had men on two weeks ago talking about their journey through infertility with their wives or even with themselves. And they were open and now we have you here and we had a very long conversation about your journey about a topic that is so super important and often undetected um, by women which is fibroids so i want to start at the beginning um mama sue is here she says y'all kept that faith yes mom hi mommy mommy is back in the building <laughs> so i want to start mommy at the beginning back. Yes. mommy is back one of the first questions that I asked since this is a fertility support talk show thing is did you always want to be a mom do you want to be a mom what's the journey of motherhood for you I do and that's why it was important for me to kind of conquer this right now because I we are actively trying so I need some more manifestations more positive vibes from you because I'm trying to bring in uh, a baby soon a baby and a dog and I'm going to manifest it so uh, that's <laughs> why this conversation of fibers was so important to me and I'm like well damn I feel a little bit alone in this. And then I realized with um, your page and um, our, our mutual friend, Don Terrier, like just talking about it kind of helps. Um, yeah. So I, that's why I think it's so important for me. It helps everybody. You have Samantha in the building saying, hey, JoJo. So yes. is JoJo your nickname? Yes, yes, yes. All and right, T JoJo. call you I JoJo. Mean, you can call okay, me JoJo. Perfect. That's perfectly fine. All right. We're going to call you JoJo because you're family now. So let us know, JoJo, about your journey um, with fibroids. And can you start by telling us before you discovered that fibroids were happening, can you start by telling us a little bit about the history of your menstrual cycle? Okay, yeah, I'll take it all the way back because I think this is super, super important. So I was always, I'm going to go back to the eighth grade, okay? Let's bring it back to when you're in middle school and everybody's having their period you kind of want to have your period because you're like, oh, what's wrong with me? You know, I want to become a woman and all that. And I was one of the last people, like the last girls to actually get their period in my grade. And I remember me being like, what's up? You know, and then I finally got it. It was a regular period. I remember going to the, like, the playground and be like, I got my period, y'all. They're like, girl, you did. I'm like, yeah, yes, I did. You would have seen it like gross. <laughs> I'm like, you know, right. I really was so happy to finally have that new chapter because I think in the movies and the books you read it, it's the becoming it's a new version of you you're no longer a child you are you know my mom's like you're you know you have blossomed you bloomed and all this stuff so having my period to me was always important and I remember back in the day you would not necessarily track your period like how it is now with these apps and your apple watches and you know clue or flow whatever you use it was more like okay I have a journal I write it down and my period was always very normal. Um, I didn't mm -hmm. have any crazy bleeding. I didn't have any crazy cramps. I remember um, a friend of mine, you know, she would be like, 
I passed out during my periods. I, you know, and I'm like, I don't have those problems. I felt like my period was very normal. It was like, okay, you know, and um, me being old school Haitian, my mom didn't allow me to wear tampons, but whatever. But even Mine in the either. Past, it was, yeah, right? <laughs> um, but even in the pad, I just had like regular bleeding. So um, I go to high school, same thing. It's until I get to college, you know, we're all family here. When people get, you know, sexually active, I'm like, I gotta get birth control. And listen, I'm out here doing it. <laughs> right. Know, I, we have all walked that walk, honey. When, we, when it was, you know? well, maybe not all uh, of us. Some of, some of us might be like extra faithful, but I had my time in the sun where we were all walking our walk. Well, I mean, and listen, I, I, I have, luckily for me, uh, you know, no judgment. I've been there. I've, I've done it all. But uh, my husband, who actually is my college sweetheart, so I'm still kind of, you know, oh. okay. <laughs> I'm still okay. But, uh, you know, we were sexually active. And I was just like, I need to get on a form of birth control. So, uh, because one thing I knew, I could not bring a baby home. And I was like, I, I can't. Not at right. that age. I have to finish college, whatever. So I start taking the pill. And then I was just the typical person who always forgets to take the pill. And I'm like... I don't want to make plan B a habit, right? That's not what plan B is for, right? Right, so right. I need something more, um, just, I don't have to think about it. So that's when I actually even tried the depo shot. And I would say that's like my junior year of college. And I'm like, oh, I don't really like it. I'm hormonal. I actually blew up. And it wasn't like I was big everywhere, but it was like my face. I was dealing with acne and I never had acne. I'm like, you know what? Not for me. So mm -hmm. after college, um, I graduate. I'm like, you know what? We are in a long-term relationship. Let me just get an IUD right now, you know, because mm -hmm. we don't see ourselves having kids anytime soon. Um, and we were fine. So life is going well. I would say before we got married, uh, we got married in 2016. And I'm like, you know what? Let me just make sure everything is okay down there, you know? Um, yeah. Because now you have an IUD, which is regulating your periods to a certain extent. And, exactly. and was that IUD also regulating your flow? Exactly. It sure was. Exactly. Regulating your flow. So, so, because I've been on birth control as well. I've been on Yasmin and many different types. And for me, they were always just emotionally, they sent me on a spin. But one of the things that they do, you guys, just so you know, you guys, you gals, people with ovaries, people with sperm, is that it sometimes regulates your flow to the point that you might not be sensitized to what your body is naturally doing because there is a hormone that is telling you clock to clock what your flow is going to be like. So if there is an underlying condition that a heavy flow might point you towards, sometimes the pill or an IUD might mask that. Is that correct, yeah. do you think? No, mm -hmm. that was co correct. So, um, and I found, here's the thing, I knew from early on, even in college, like, I would like to have a black doctor. And I, that was, you see how now that's a conversation from now. But to me, it just, it felt good to have someone that looked like me. And um, let's go with this guy named Dr. O, right? We're not going to get into it. I ain't going to get no lawsuits, right? But uh, <laughs> Dr. O was a, Dr. O was a black man. And I was just like, it's a little weird that he's a man, but I'm actually like, not even mad about the man part. I'm like, whatever, We're, this is science, you know? Um, and he had, and this is when I, I should have really known better. Right. But woulda, coulda, you know, whatever. We learn uh, in the process. We learn yeah, in the journey. In the process. Uh, the IUD, I go for this checkup and the IUD, he's like, oh, well, you know, the string is kind of missing. Um, we might, I don't know if we might have, you know, lost it. I'm like, what, what you mean? <laughs> like, it's so you know what, let's pause right there because you said the string is kind of missing. Just to explain to some of the people that might not know what an IUD is, an yes. intrauterine device that is, a, that is a birth control. Can you just explain, just, you know, like briefly let them know what the insertion is like and, and that there is a string that is for them to take it out. Exactly. But can you just let everybody know what an IUD is as a form of birth control? Yeah, so... I mean, and this is, everybody has their own different methods. Um, you know, my version of birth control might not work for you, but for me, it is basically a device that is inserted into your uterus, right? And it basically, it looks like a T shape and then there's a little string that comes out. But if this T, for instance, goes a little left or a little right or whatever, <laughs> the wrong way, it could be a bad situation. It could be that right. you're, you're puncturing things that you shouldn't be puncturing, right? So, and the um, hormones actually come out of the T areas, right? So the hormones exactly. that they're going directly into your bloodstream, you guys, because it's actually in there 
um, is coming out of this area here, and this area is more for them to insert it and get it out. Exactly. And this was just for me, like the easiest way at that time, it was the easiest way for me not to have to take a pill, not for me to have a patch or whatever, not for me. I just want easy. I want to like be sexually active with my partner and not have a baby right now. So when Dr. O tells me that he can't find the string and, you know, the words of like, ooh, like his face. I, but I, he's a doctor, right? I have to trust him. He knows what he's doing. And, but I did panic. I said, you know what? Can you just please take it out? Because the fact that it's lost right now is not comforting to me. I need you to take this out and I will figure it out with my partner from then. Um, right. So we take the, the IUD out. Nothing Thank God nothing was punctured at this point that, you know, that I know of and everything. He's like, okay, you're fine. You're fine. And at that point, I should have known. But once again, I'm just like, look, I found a doctor. I found a black doctor. It's so hard to find a doctor. Um, let me just stick with this guy. That IUD situation could have been anything. It could have been from, you know, sex. It could have been from any single thing. I'm not going to just pin it on this doctor, right? But I want to pause there for a second because when you said the fact I should have known because what I want, what I think talks like this are really um, helpful in doing is that we don't blame ourselves, right? We don't say, I, you know, I, I should have said something that I didn't say because in the moment we're still learning what all of these things are going on. But I think it's important to point out what you said I should have known because it's always easier to look back and connect the dots and go, there was exactly. something that told me in my, in my voice or in my spirit that maybe I should change doctors or maybe I should ask a different question. So I, I'm glad that you said that because for everybody that's listening here, I think what you offer in saying that statement is, listen to your first mind exactly listen exactly. to your first mind because the reason that jordana is here and is going to tell us about her whole fibroid journey is so that if your first mind tells you something that maybe jordana or myself or somebody that went ahead of us didn't listen to and didn't take that advice of ourselves, we're mm -hmm. offering this to you so that you know that that voice is there for a reason so, exactly. okay, so then let's go back. So you have the doctor and he takes it out and you're not blaming it on him. But it's yeah, out. but I'm still rocking with him, right? And um, so I'm based in Brooklyn, New York. So another thing for me is just like, look, he's convenient. He has parking. <laughs> That's a big deal if you're a New Yorker. I'm like, he's right. back. I'm, so, you know, um, anyway, we are about to get married. And my husband and I were like, you know what? Let's just go make sure everything's right. I have an appointment with this doctor. And I said, hey, by the way, you know, for the past, like the past year, this is like, you know, what you, you do like a six month or a yearly. So for the past year, um, I've been having like heavier cramping. I've been having, you know, heavier bleeding. Um, is that normal? And he's just like, I, I was like, I didn't know if it was because of the, the disruption of the, you know, IUD. I'm like, oh, this must be all the back in my head, guys. And this is going to be TMI because we're family. But I'm like, oh, this must be all the backed up blood, right? This must be all the like, oh. Right. <laughs> I'm so glad that you say that because we do, we rationalize things. You know what I mean? Especially if yeah. somebody is saying like, it's okay. You're thinking to yourself, oh, my period was regular and it was a decent flow, but it wasn't too heavy. So maybe this is just my body letting out. Just everything all of, out. All of those things because now the hormones aren't there. It makes total logical exactly. sense in our non-scientific mind. Exactly. So I tell him this, and he's just like, well, how hard are the, um, the cramps? I'm like, you know, unbearable. And I, I was like, I just feel it just feels different. So he's like, oh, no. I want, you to, I want you to pause one more time, because I want you to explain unbearable. Because I think people need to hear yes. what that unbearable. really is. Like, when I would talk, exactly. When I would talk to my friends, I felt like a lot of my friends just lived their lives regularly during their period. That's the vibe I got. And I'm looking around like, wait, so you don't have to like pre-plan your paths. You don't have to pre-plan like your, I would pack my tampons like I was going to school for lunch. Like I would have like, okay, this is my two o'clock tampon, my 2.30, my two, you know, I would have to have all these tampons or these pads. And, you know, if I had to absolutely wear white and now mind you, this is, I'm, I'm about to get married. So I'm bridal shower, bachelorette, like anything with white, I was wearing white a lot. It's like, okay, well, let me just, you know, I would get anxiety when it came to planning things because of my period, because it, 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 it hindered different aspects of my life. 
I, I, I'm, I'm, my hands are up because Michelle Polston, I know your hands better be going up from her normal soon. This is so important to say, because what happens often is sometimes, you know, a period is a vital sign. It is a vital sign. Dr. Yeah. Uh, Duke tells us that all the time. But I had a friend as well that used to have to pack tampons, pack pads, and that becomes normalized. We think that that is a normal way that we have our cycle. And you guys, it's not. That is a sign that there is an underlining condition. But when we are not raised or geared or or see other people going through the same thing, we just think, my, I just have heavy, painful periods. Exactly. So I'm glad that you exactly. offered that to us because it became normal for you to literally pack a bag of your necessities when you were on your cycle. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I fought him on this. I'm like, look, I know you, it might be my body's changing, but I think we need to do, is there an extra test? Is there something, you know, more, more, what do I need to do? And he's just like, and then he finally says, you know what, I guess we could kind of get you, um, maybe let's just do an ultrasound, you know, maybe let's, let's, let's just see what's there. Uh-oh. There you are. There, I, here I am. So Hold yeah, on, so you froze for a second. I heard you. Let's just do an ultrasound. That was what I, that's where you dropped out. Let's just do an ultrasound. Okay. So he basically says, let's do an ultrasound. I'm like, all right. So at that point, we find one fibroid. And I asked him what this is. I said, you know, um, and he's like, oh, well, you know what? This is very normal. People have this all the time. I think I lost you again. People have this all the time. Um, no big deal. No big sweat. He's like, that's what's causing your heavy, uh, your heavy bleeding. So he says people have them all the time. No big deal. No big sweat. At this point, had he located the fibroid? Did we know if it was inside of the uterus, growing outside of the uterus? So was it was right any... outside my uterus, right outside. And that's why he was like, oh, it's really no cause for panic at all because it's not, you know, it's not blocking anything major. It's so small. It would be more work to get it out than it's worth. And trust me, this is not a big deal. No big sweat. And I was just like, oh, okay. I equated it like, Oh, okay. It's just like, uh, in my head, and I don't want to, I am going to just be transparent with you. I just looked at it like, okay, like maybe like a little like bruise or sore muscle. Or I was just, I really downplayed it because he had downplayed it. And okay. So this is really, really important to say because he downplayed it and didn't alert you because where there is one fibroid, there is usually more y'all. And that's just the truth. And a fibroid is a non-cancerous tumor that actually grows inside or right outside of the womb. If it's inside of the womb, it can cause all kinds of problems with fertility, with being able to carry a baby. And there's a whole lot of complications. So what this doctor did was he kind of just brushed it off. Yeah. And gave you and gave you permission to not need to really think too much about it. Right? Exactly. Exactly. And that's how I felt. I'm like, all right, cool. So, um, you know, I get married, life is okay, but still very heavy bleeding. And I had mentioned to you previously that, you know, I, I'm working, right? So I am, I remember one time I'm at the studio, I'm backstage and I feel that like gush, right? And I literally remember like walking backwards. So like the grip guys and the cameraman could not see, you know, and I was like, this can't be normal. I should not be just having accidents at this age <laughs> you know mm -hmm, what I'm saying mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was like this is you know this is getting worse so um but you know he's still telling me I want to say he's my doctor again for like another year and then um I, I'm getting older my husband and I we are like we, we want to start you know not like we just want to start talking about the baby process we want to like you know look at it and research it and see what works for us uh and then I just said you know what I'm really sick of these heavy periods like I'm in pain all the time I'm I would cry when I would get my period a lot too and I'm like it shouldn't be like this you know what before we you know start really talking about this let me just do some more research on other doctors and try to get a second opinion because something doesn't feel right 
this still doesn't feel like a normal period to me. Um, and this can't be life because I would have, you know, until menopause, I would have years and years of this. You know what I'm saying? Okay, somebody pause right there. Somebody write in the comments in all caps, this cannot be life. I love that you, I love that you said that. Somebody, Nichelle or Ebony Ford that's on here, Nichelle Polson um, wrote down that she had fibroids in her uterus. She had, there are four types of locations of fibroids. You guys put some prayer hands up for Nichelle who's recovering for a myomectomy right now. I love you, girl. But um, love I love that. This cannot be light. We need to love write it. that down because that is a declaration of saying, mm -hmm. Jenny12, thank you for putting it down there. Uh, Malika, thank you for putting it down there. That's a declaration of saying, I know I deserve better than what's happening right now. And so something needs to be done. This cannot exactly. be what, this is not what he is saying my, the rest of my life needs to feel like. So I love that. This cannot be life. I hope you see all the prayer hands and all yes. this cannot be I life. My, because my friends here too. Thank you guys so much for coming. Hi, friends. Me. All my friends are here. Um, so Good. I just, I, and, and I leaned on my friends. I leaned on their experiences. And the fact that they kind of had no more, they were like, no, you know, you're right. You're not bugging. If you feel like something is going on, you know, maybe you should try to get a second opinion. So what had happened was, you know, when somebody says a story about what had happened, it's about to go down. What right? had happened, yes. Um, is that as I was, I go to the doctor this past, like January 2020-ish, right? And I said, hey, you know what? Can I get all my records? I am, you know, just, I'm moving practices. I'm going to, but I knew I needed my records. And literally this nurse, she was like an old Jamaican lady. She goes, girl, everybody leaving him. And I'm like, oh, Okay. <laughs> Like, Woo! So there was a trail of women that were like, no more. I was just like, oh, okay, thanks. But all right, she's like, okay, well, we have to um, get you your paperwork. We'll sign. We'll get you some stuff over. Uh, just give us a few. We've got to pull it up. And this was actually on, like, February or so, actually. And then, you know, March happens, and the end of the world happens, right? I'm like, oh, my God. Are you kidding me? March 2020. Yeah, exactly. So coronavirus, I'm just like, you know what, let me just continue to do my research on my own doctor. If I get this paperwork, if I get my ultrasounds, great. If not, I guess I have to start from scratch again. So it is what it is, right? But at this point, since I've had the heavy bleeding and, and I'm doing research on heavy bleeding, I'm literally Googling, what does heavy bleeding mean? And this thing comes up, fibroids. And then I'm reading, so, you know, you start going on WebMD, you start going on Google, you're like, holy shit. Um, maybe mine are really this bad or maybe mine are really, you know, so now I have a sense of urgency. I have a, I have a panic. Like I need to find a specialist. I need to find a doctor who will listen to me, who is not going to tell me I am crazy. Who's not going to tell me I'm, yo, you know, it's fine. You know, let's not dramatize things. And I'm like, and he literally, I remember one time he said, you know, maybe you might be a little dramatic. And now looking back at that, I'm, I'm speechless. You know what I'm saying? As, a, I'm, as am I. As am I. So, um, so that was that. So now I'm like still looking for another doctor. I'm Googling. Everybody. I don't want to brush. I, before we go, before we go further, because I just, um, I want to commend you for, for traveling the journey that you did. And because it, that's, it's traumatic when your yeah. healthcare provider is not listening to you calling your your symptoms drama um uh, brushing you off and you specifically went to a black doctor because you wanted somebody that looks like you so we talk about the health disparities here and the internal biases and and i just think that we need to point out um you know from your story that i don't care what package it comes in if someone is brushing you off if someone is taking your words and weaponizing them against you when you're trying to advocate for your body, it is time to, to find a specialist. And it is yeah. time for you to hug, hug yourself really, really tight and know that you are, you are capable of taking care of yourself and that you did not get the care that you deserved in that moment and the moments prior. So I don't care what package it comes in. I just exactly. wanted to say, I just want exactly. to send hugs to you. You guys put hugs. What's that hug emoji? I do this all the time <laughs> on Warrior Wednesdays. When I get a feeling, everybody in the tribe puts it in the comment. I want the hug emoji because I want to hug the, the pre-Jordana 
before she got to the point of um, advocating, because we've all been there. We've all yeah. been there. And, and what he did was wrong. And I commend you for, for moving forward. So hug her, y'all. Okay. So we're finding a new doctor. A new doctor. So hug. basically, I'm just researching. Yeah, I'm researching other doctors. And this is all during coronavirus. So I was like, you know what? When they open up back appointments and when the hospitals kind of like stabilize, I want to be, I want to have appointments, you know? So, and then me being, you know, the producer, I'm a planner. So I'm like, okay, well, this doctor, I would like to, you know, have a doctor that could be my, you know, OBGYN and somebody who's going to be with me for my baby journey, someone that's going to deliver my child. So I'm like planning, okay, what hospital do I want and what kind of, you know, and at this point, since a black doctor had, um, had kind of led me astray, I was more on some like, look, I want a doctor because all doctors are not good doctors, right? And my best friend, like, she's a doctor. And she's like, you know, they're, they're normal people. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I want a doctor who's going to listen. So the first specialist I found was a white guy. And I was just like, you know what, but let me see. So I'm asking him about, like, do you, it's a job interview because I'm spending, I'm going to spend thousands of dollars with you. You know, you're getting paid. If I become a patient of yours, I need to know what you think about this fibroid. I need to know what you think, you know, what's going to be your approach, what kind of surgery, what kind of, how are we going to, you know, um, how am I going to be able to have a baby? I'm asking you about the black maternal, you know, mortality rate. I'm asking you questions because now I am, you are working for me. And I think so many people, I feel like, cause my mom, for instance, you know, I, as I mentioned, like I'm in Brooklyn, New York, I was born in Haiti. So my mom comes from the world where you get dressed up to go to the doctor. You have to like basically impress this doctor and you don't want them to stereotype you, you know? No, you work for me. Oh, listen, <laughs> listen, I got, I, is Regina Townsend on here, y'all? If Regina Townsend isn't on here, tag her or send her in from the Broken Brown Egg. She might be here already, but this is something that she said on a live that was amazing, which she was putting together a team and she is the head of the team and she calls all the plays. So she is finding all of the people that are there to support the team, just like you said, and you, this is a job interview, y'all. This is something, Put write a note, put it on your hand, bring, and if you don't feel like you're a vocal person, because I talk to women all the time that reach out due to Warrior Wednesdays and want to talk more about these things and I love talking with y'all, but there are people that don't have the personality which is fine to speak up for themselves. If they, they feel uncomfortable in that space. And I always tell them, bring your home girl that will speak up for you. Bring your health mm -hmm. advocate with you. You have a friend that will say all the things, bring that person. So I'm, yeah. I just, I'm so glad that you said it was a job interview because that is how we need to think about it. This is your body, y'all. This is exactly. your body. Exactly. So yeah, so you asked him all of these questions. So now um, I basically, you know, he wasn't even that bad. He wasn't even that bad. And he, but I was like, you know what? Let me go and get another opinion. And I do the same thing. I go to the person. I say, hey, this is the ultrasound. And now, mind you, let me backtrack a little bit. When I go to this new, the, the, the new white male physician, uh, I called, just like said, hey, I have a fibroid. I know I have a fibroid. I need you to take a look at it. He actually finds, he's like, no, you actually have two. So I was like, okay. I go from one to two. And the one that he found, the remember this original fibroid that Dr. O had told me is no big deal. It went from like, <laughs> he said it was, Dr. O like, described it as like, oh, it's like the size of like a seed. Now this small seed has grown into the size of a grapefruit. Y'all, you understand? You know? So it mm -hmm. has grown to the size of a grapefruit now. So now I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and he's like, oh, you have like one other small one, but both of them are outside your uterus. Um, and the good thing is that it was like, it was a, it wasn't like on, it was, it had a stalk. So it had a, a thick stalk and then was the, the grapefruit. So he was like, that's actually kind of good because, you know, it's not like we're going to have to be, uh, doing a lot of, a lot of scraping. We could hopefully just cut. So I'm like, mm -hmm. right. And also this stalk, you guys is usually uh, has a lot of the blood supply. The blood that exactly, is actually exactly. feeding, that's actually feeding the, the tumor there. This stalk has a lot of that. So exactly. just so you know what that, what that really means. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So now I'm like, okay. So now I'm even more scared because now I'm like, okay, well, a grapefruit is a big, because I know what a grapefruit is. <laughs> so like, that's a big size. Yeah. 
So yeah. let me do some more research still. So then I interview um, uh, my doctor. I interview a black f a female physician, and it, it, it went wrong with her, so I could name drop her. I, I interview uh, Dr. Camila, and she comes in. I, I found her. I think somebody sent me her IG. I think my good friend uh, Vita did, or somebody, Tanya probably. They're like, you know, just check out her IG. She, she looks cool. She black right, cool. I go in there, and she comes in rocking her box her box braids with the beads on the end. I'm like, okay, I like this for sure. <laughs> you know, like, I like that. And she practices out of a great hospital in New York. So I'm like, okay, I like the hospital. Let me see what she's about. And I tell her my situation and she's like, look, you have all, she's like, you look like you're the type of person to try to plan everything. Um, I know you probably think you want a vaginal birth right now and that's great. But what's the, what's the most important thing right now is me as a doctor is to have a healthy mom and have a healthy baby. So your fibroid, it is affecting your way of life. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you can't, you know, have a vaginal birth at all, because that's what the white male doctor said. He said, listen, we are going to have a surgery and your next children are going to be C-section, period. So that's another reason why I was just like, I don't kind of like what that means. You know so what these I mean? are two, right. So these are two different things. Let me go back for a second because Michelle Polson of her normal, she's also on the board of Resolve, the National Infertility Association, says that's a pedu, pendu, I can't even read it, Michelle, because I don't have my glasses on. Hold on, y'all. Did she try to say peduncular? Pendaculated. Pendaculated, Kool-Aided fibroid. So I guess that's the one with the stem. She knows all the things. Yes, um, and the, also that's somebody, what, that's the one with the stem. Thank you, Michelle. And also, somebody wants to know what the doctor's IG is. Again, if you can say that, yes, what's her I will, IG? I will, I will drop her IG. I'm in the New York City area. She te uh, she practices out of Lenox Hill. I will drop that in here as well. Let me just, I'm on my other phone, so let me figure that out too. Coup de collated. Michelle, you know I can't pronounce that yet. Go ahead. But once again, though, like, this is not like a... I'm saying she is your doctor. Like, I'm telling you that you need to do your own research because I research several doctors. So yeah. um, she, her approach was like, look, you know what? How about instead of like, you know, saying no to a possible vaginal birth, how about we just, you know, let's go for an MRI. Because in my experience, where there's one fibroid, there's always more. So I'm like, okay. So now I go to the MRI and now she finds four fibroids. So now I went from one to two to four. Wow. So I'm like, I don't know. This is a lot. And she basically, you know, I'm like, and she's like, look, this is what I think. Um, she, rec you know, I can have done the surgery laparoscopically, but her whole thing was, you know, you probably have more in there. So if you were to do an open my myomectomy, I probably could get a better look around mm -hmm. and see what else we could find. And I'm just like, uh, I'm still not really like, I don't even know you like that. The last black doctor I had <laughs> wasn't necessarily my best. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm thinking all these things because I'm so jaded, right? Well, like, it's maybe, trauma. Maybe, it, it's yeah, it's I'm like, trauma maybe. when you're hearing different things all the time about your body. It's traumatic. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, let me go find another doctor. And she's like, no, I actually appreciate what you're doing. I think that's good. I think you need to be an advocate for yourself. Here are some other referrals. If you come to me, great. I know my job. I know my strengths. I know, you know, but I commend you for that. And the fact that I didn't have this, the fact that she didn't make me feel guilty for getting a second and third opinion I actually like that. You know what I mean? Because once mm -hmm. again, you are going to work for me. You know, like this is my body. This is my money. Um, Cause surgeries are not cheap. So from there, I go to like two more doctors. And then after I sit down with my husband, I'm like, you know what? I think I want to, to go with Dr. Camila. I think I, I feel good. I even like, you know, I mean, I want that relationship where, you know, um, I like the fact that she allowed me and I didn't feel weird and like I was doing it behind her back getting second and third opinions. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. to me and the other opinions, I'm like, no, for all that, I could just go to her because at least I felt really comfortable with her. And she actually put me in my place. She's like, listen, I know you are, you want this team vaginal birth and you want this and you want that. And you're doing all your research and you're on Instagram and Pinterest. And I know all that looks cool, but me as a doctor, I can't, you have to be healthy mom, healthy baby. And if you want to be a mom, if you want to get into this journey of motherhood, guess what? You are going to have to do a lot of shit that you don't want to do as a mom. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in, before your mom and after your mom. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry to curse you. That's li- that was literally her reason. What she like, said. Right. I was like, yeah. Okay. That's okay. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cussing Christian sometimes. Mama Sue can tell you that very, I'm very sorry. clearly I'm on here. Like, no, no, no. Mama sorry. Sue is, uh, please, child, she taught me how to cuss. Now, I'm going to be very, very real. Mama Sue, you know that you and your mother, my grandmother, sat me down and taught me how to cuss. And Mama Sue, your husband's on here. You guys, my dad is on here. So wave to um, my dad, Robert Stewart. He's on here, although he don't know how to make a comment. So he's just watching. But wave to Papa yeah. Bear. That's and, what we call him. I see one of, the, I see one of the, um, the comments. Somebody said, that's a lie. You could have a, you could have a beat back. And you're absolutely right. But, you know, this doctor was making it seem like it was nothing. That's why I was like, you know what? I don't want to go to the doctor where his first option is like, it is what it is. You know, take it take it or leave it. and I didn't like that so at least with her I like the fact that she was gonna you know um just see what we could do and then after doing the research on the open myomectomy I was a little scared because it was real surgery right I'm like yeah I feel like the laparoscopic it looks a little easier and um but I'm like you know what I think she might be right because if I went from having one to having two to having four I just kind of want to do like, and I know that um, sometimes the fibroids come back and I could get into that later, but I was just like, let me just do the open myomectomy because I'm working from home anyway. I had planned it around, um, I had planned it around my vacation time anyway. So it was, I wasn't even going to be working from home or working, you know, uh, it was around the holidays and I said, I'm going to do it. So I spoke with her and she, um, the one reason too, and I've, now I'm more confident in my decision making. Now I'm calling my doctor. I'm calling her and she's answering, which is something that the other doctors never did. I'm calling her and she's like, oh, hey, girl, I'm at the hospital, but can, can I call you back like in 40 minutes? And she's actually calling me back. So to me, I'm like, this is a new relationship. This is a new dynamic because I'm like, okay, this is what I need. You know what I mean? This is the kind of relationship it should be because you are. You just said the thing. You said the word relationship. And when we are going through this, y'all, I just, I hope you write that down. Um, when, when, when Jordana said, this cannot be life and write down the world, this is the relationship that I was looking for because it should feel like a relationship with your doctor. Yeah. It is a journey. You don't yeah. get one fibroid and go through all the things without going through an entire journey. And I know, I know that there's a lot of comments on here. The comment that you read about the vaginal birth, that's from the Princess Warrior. She's all the way in the UK. What's up, Princess Warrior? And there's a lot of comments on here. But you guys, I just need to preface that, that Jordana and I are not doctors, but we are sharing these experiences. There is a path for everybody that they must make their own personal decision. I do not come on here because I see some comments like telling people what to do and, and do this that way and do that. That's not where, what we're about. What we're about is making sure that you have the information and the testimony from different women that may help you filter through what's best for you. What's best for you. Jordana made a decision that was best for her. Michelle makes a decision that's best for her. This is testimony, y'all. This is what yeah, you know yeah. there is light on the other end of the tunnel. But it is not here to say there is only one way to cure fibroids, only one path that you should do. I ain't about that exactly. light. I've seen it in the comments. Keep it moving. Okay, keep exactly. going. So she's and, speaking and, into your listening. Exactly. And another thing, too, for the people who are like, oh, you don't need five. I, I heard this a lot. Like, oh, you could, you could do diet or, oh, you could do this. Keep in mind, guys, I had ran the New York City Marathon, a whole 26.2 miles. I was training for that. So to me, in my mind, I could not get no healthier. You know what I'm saying? I am eating all the right things. I am, and my fibroid at this point was growing to be the size of a grapefruit. So at this point, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? Right, right. You know? So can you hear me? So anyway, I go with, yeah, I can hear you. It's a little bit of a delay, but I I think we're rocking and rolling. I just want to make sure you all can hear me. Yes, yes. Okay. So anyway, so I go in for the surgery because, you know, we talk over every single um, part of the surgery. She's answering my questions. Literally the night before the surgery, I call her and I'm like, uh, I'm a little scared because like, just make sure you're not going to take out my uterus, right? Because, you know, I'm hearing stories about people waking up with no uterus. And 
She's like, Jordana, you came to me because you and your husband want to plan for a family. I will not take out your uterus unless it means saving your life. You know, there's going to be game day decisions that are going to have to be made, but I understand you're nervous and it's completely fine to be nervous. You should be nervous. You know what I'm saying? So that made me feel a little bit better. So I go on a surgery day um, and it was great because now I not only is my doctor black and she's a woman, but her resident was even a black woman and right and um so i but i'm still nervous i'm crying while i'm doing the paperwork because in the paperwork you know when you do a real surgery they are like oh this might happen sharp objects i'm like wait a minute <laughs> you know like this is still scary so i'm like crying silently behind my mask i'm by myself my husband dropped me off but because of covid he's not allowed to go upstairs right so um, and this doctor sees me cry, her resident sees me crying and she's like, no, this is perfectly fine. You're, you're going to be okay. And I'm just like, I don't know. And she was like, well, tell me about yours. You know, and she's like, well, what's making you nervous? I'm like, well, my fibroid is huge. So I'm afraid that maybe, you know, you might even find some more stuff down there. And she's like, look, this is the surgery and she's going over the process. So at this point I have people explain the process to me about, I want to say four or five times and nobody gave me attitude. Nobody made it seem like I was crazy for asking these questions um and then uh i'm like i was like you know what she's like okay you're fine i'm like you know what you're right i just can't wait to get candace up out of here and she's like candace i'm like oh yeah that's the name of my fibroid <laughs> i like i was like the big one's candace and she got some friends and she's like why the name candace and i was like i watch you know a reality show she's like oh but tell me <laughs> she's like girl we got we gonna get Candace out of there. Was... Wait, wait, y'all. Okay, this is this is the lad. This is the comedy break of the show because when I talked to Jordana on the phone and she told me she had named it Candace and it was after uh, Potomac Housewives, I did have to holler because let me tell you something. First of all, what I love about everything that you just said is that you called the doctor the night before because you were nervous, you were scared, and you wanted to make sure you were not going to come out with a surprise hysterectomy. A lot of people, Jordana, don't take that initiative when they're scared, don't feel like they have the right to call the doctor when it's, when it's not doctor's hours. And that's why I'm so glad that you took that initiative and that you found somebody that would answer your call, that would call you back. What Jordana did, y'all, is she got to the doctor that spoke to her listening and yeah. that met her where she was physically and emotionally. And that is a wonderful thing. And then on top of it, she called it Candace. They're putting the laugh signs up there now. Because let me tell you something. When you go through these types of things, you have to find a way to smile. You have to find a way to make it make, make this make sense to me, what's going on in my body. So mm -hmm. obviously, Potomac can, can, uh, Candace had to, had to go. So you told the, the resident <laughs> that Candace is behind and had to leave out of here. So then what happened? So, um, but, and she starts laughing and then my doctor comes in to like go over everything. So we were all laughing together. She's like, so my doctor's like, yeah, Candace. And the rest of it is like, oh, so you called the five one Candace <laughs> So, um, she was like, yeah. And I'm just like, like, look, like, you know, I'm just really still nervous, but I think I'm okay. Um, can we just like play, um, some Beyonce? Cause I, I watched Grey's Anatomy and, um, you know, I think the music, I think I want to pray. And my doctor and the rest was like, oh, absolutely. Well, the rest was like, absolutely. And I'm like, okay, if I am going to go under, I want to go under like my, you know, under my terms. And I want to make sure I'm comfortable. I'm all about, you know, vibes and, and affirmations and, you know, speaking things. I, I need all the positivity, right? So I was like, yeah, I kind of want Beyonce. If you could get the Homecoming album, that would be great. Um, and I'm just, and they're like, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> We got you. So the surgery is about to happen. We roll it. We're rolling. We're walking to the operating room and everybody's like partying, like the staff, the scrub techs, they're all partying the way. Cause I guess they know, like if you're walking to that room, it's, it's, it's go time, you know? And I remember this black guy with dreads was like, you got this, this, and everybody's looking at me. It was like very scary. Cause you know, you see these operating rooms on television and I don't think I would be in that, you know, and they have the bed and they have it laid out. And, um, you know, the lights are there. I'm like, oh my God. Um, and my, my friend who's a doctor, she had said a prayer like, you know, God, please, please bless the scrub techs, bless the nurses, bless everybody. Because that whole team matters. You know what I'm matters. saying? It matters. It yes. matters, you know? Yes. Um, 
So I get in the room and the doctor at this point wasn't in there, but the resident's there. I remember she was, she's another black woman. And, and um, I'm like, uh, hey, sis, where's the Beyonce? And the scrub tech is like, oh, they said that you wanted music, but like, I'm all sterile right now. If you want, like, you know, he had a mixtape. Like, this is a, this is a good mixtape, you know? And I'm just like, I'm already like, sis, I want him at Beyonce. We're going to wait. <laughs> we're going to wait. So while we're waiting, um, the doctor comes in and you know, everybody scrubbed in and all that stuff. And um, I'm like, hey, I, can we just wait for at least a song that I kind of mess with, right? At least a song. And my doctor's like, absolutely. While we're waiting, we, because, um, you know, he was like, I can't, and I get it. He's still, I can't make this man take off and redo all that stuff. <laughs> to get um, beyond. Yeah, I can't, I can't be Beyonce in this moment, right? <laughs> um, but we say a prayer. Um, I lead the prayer. I basically say, like, you know, God, this is what I want. I'm trusting you. I'm trusting the staff. God, I'm trusting. I was like, please. Now, everything my, ha my friend had repeated to me in the prayer, I said to them, I was like, God, please bless these scrub texts. Please bless this. And, and I had all their names. So right? you, you led the prayer amongst your surgery team. Do you guys hear this? Yeah. You led the prayer amongst your surgery team before you went under. Yeah. And and you said the words that you needed to say to God. You needed him to hear and talk yeah. to you. And you did. And y'all hear what this is? This is life. Oh. <laughs> no, I want to cry, but it's like, ooh, I hate I this. It. But it's like so scary. You know what I'm saying? I do. I do, you, you know, and it's like I just want to be normal. I, I mean, the, I mean, I had like a broken arm in like middle school, and that's about it. So the fact that like this thing that was said that it wasn't a big deal has taken over my life. Whew. You know, it. I can't do anything. I would have train rides where I would plan. 40 minute train rides. I wouldn't sit on the seat because it's like, I don't want to make an accident. You know, like shit like that, that people don't really talk about. And I'm just here to say like, don't trust every old doctor. Like speak up for yourself because if 24, 23 year old me spoke up, not saying that I wouldn't have had this problem or whatever, just more on the like, you have to be your biggest advocate, especially with health insurance companies, especially in this country, like especially as a black woman overall, you have to speak up for yourself. So yes, I prayed because I'm like, God, like, yo, like, I really need, I really need to make it back for my mom. I really need to make it back for my family. My husband would be so devastated. My husband would be so lost. He's like here, but like, I know he couldn't hit if I don't come back on the outside of this. You know what I'm saying? So surgeries and things scary, you know? Because, like, you realize that, like, you are human. You could die. You know what I'm saying? So, like, the fact that this doctor, the fact that the everybody, nurses, all of them, they sat there in a circle and we together, and that's how I went under. So I'm like, all right, well, the song. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I'm like, leave with my glasses. No, on. but wait, before you go to the song, before you go to that, you guys know how we do. Because what happens is, I'm so glad that, that the emotion came out of you. Um, and, and I hope you can scroll down and see all of the comments <laughs> and love that yeah. is coming to you. You guys give her a lot of love and a lot of, a lot of flowers. We all the time try to keep it together for ourselves and for the people that we love around us. And what just happened, what we just witnessed is the most beautiful pouring out of the trauma that you went through. What we witnessed was your transparency of that fear that's real. And so you freed yeah. somebody by letting that out because what happens is if someone else that's holding on to it trying to act like it's not a big deal, even though they're terrified over here at night by themselves, now knows, let it out. It is scary. Surgery yeah. is scary. Fibroids are it's traumatic. Like you said, so going on the scary. train, scared that you're going to have an accident, packing for, you guys, this is why we do this. We do this so that you know you're not alone. 
Your journey is your own, but we, you have warriors walking beside you. So I hope yeah. you see all these cards. I and do. I'm, and Thank I'm, you, guys. I mean, because it's been such a journey, right? So, like, I've just been holding this all in, and it's just like I, you know, that's why when I saw your page and I, you know, I follow a couple of these pages, it's about that sense of community because it's a lot. It's a lot of stress, and, you know, calling doctors, figuring out research, and, you know, getting lost on the web, and then for me to make it to that day, right? I'm like, Ooh. oh, crap, this is really happening. This is happening. Down, you know, but I'm glad that I put people in positions, like the doctor, you know, she came correct, and her, her whole her whole room was correct, you know? So after we led this prayer circle, I'm like, well, I want to manifest a baby and a dog. And they're, they're like, amen. And I'm like, I want to go on vacation pre -co after COVID. And they're like, amen, we all laugh. <laughs> so now we're waiting. We are, I'm like, okay, well, let's just wait for like, cause he had a shuffle, he had a mix. <laughs> so I'm like, let's just, cause I don't want, I don't like this song. So we're talking and then like, you know, but the apple bomb came up. I'm like, this is a good one, but mm, Nah, so we're still laughing. We're waiting. So everybody's legit just waiting, all like <laughs> sterile, waiting for the song that's gonna make you all right. Yes, and I'm I like, love it. So then, um, "Nice for What" by Champagne Pappy, <laughs> Drake. Oh, and Ron. Hold on, <laughs> and that's my. <laughs> This is what Jordana, this was the song that eventually. <laughs> yes. And that hey. was, And I was like, you know what? This is it. <laughs> that was the song. And you know what's so amazing about um, Nice for What? Is your journey with Dr. O all the way to here that the title of that song, Nice for What? You ain't got to yeah. be nice. If somebody isn't speaking into your listening, if someone's asking you personal questions and triggering you, if somebody's telling you you're being dramatic, you just, this is what needs to happen. Yes. Yes. It's so, it's so good. And I see all the cartwheels, the freaking, the sunglasses. Yes. Oh I love it. No, I, that's what I'm like. You know what? And mind you, they have me scrap. They have, you know how they have the thing and they have the, you know, the IVs and all. And I'm like, yeah, this is my... Because I just remember my vacation <laughs> to NOLA. I was in NOLA when this song dropped my girl. I'm like, all right, this is a good one. And um, and then everybody was like, good choice, good choice. <laughs> you know, that, that's the, I hear nice for what? I hear, you know, like, I'm like are you guys going to count down? And, and, and then I was, I was out. So now I wake up and get this, guys. I wake up to my doctor holding my hand. I'm still a little woozy. Um, I'm, I'm in a lot of pain, but that's a little, that's normal. And she says, Jordana, we found 12 fibroids. 12. So you went in thinking four. Mm -hmm. And when you came out of surgery, she said, we found 12. Yes. 12. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> She's like, go to rest. We'll, we'll go to sleep. We'll talk about it in a few. I'll be here when you wake up. And sure enough, she was there when I woke up again. And she was just like, listen, I'm really glad with how the surgery came out. Um, your uterus actually is in good, good shape. Uh, luckily for me, and this might not be the case for many women, but most of my fibroids, well, actually all of them were like outside. So she didn't mm -hmm. necessarily have to do tons of scraping or, you know, and the big one, which what we were really concerned of, Candace. So she, and that's another thing. She, when I woke up, she's like, we got Candace. We got all of them out. <laughs> she was like, we got, I, you know, I was like, we got the green eye bandits out. Like, so if you guys follow Potomac, but okay. she was just like, so that kind of, you know, added um, some laughter to it. But she was like, no, and all jokes aside, like we, we found 12 and you're okay. Um, your uterus didn't take any real damage at all. Um, Amen. And she was just like, you know, I'm actually so confident before I think, you know, most people, because before she had told me maybe wait six months to start trying. Um, but she said that I was actually in really good shape. So she said, you, you know, I think you're good. I think you could start trying in three months or so, you know. So mm -hmm. I actually had a, a good experience and I know I'm fortunate and I'm so happy. But I think for me, it just came down to like speaking up for myself because I'm so confident in other aspects of my life. But I think when it comes to healthcare, we tend to just, you know, like, as I said, like, do what the doctor says. He's a doctor. She's a doctor. And I, I think why I'm so happy that you invited me on is because white, black, whatever, it, you know, 
no matter what, just listen to your body and realize that these doctors work for you and find yes. the right doctor, you know, because it was great to, to one, go under to Drake, <laughs> two, <laughs> you know, like have that kind of relationship because that's what it is. It's a relationship. Yeah. Uh oh, did I lose you, Jordana? I'm gonna give it a second, it'll come back. Let me see y'all, can y'all hear me? I need, did we lose her? Somebody send me something. Y'all here? did we lose Jordana? Are y'all here? Jordana, if you're, if you're watching, jump back on because we just want to get some last words for you because you, you were just giving us our life there at the end about the relationship. And I think I lost you. Vanessa, hey, how are you? All the way from the UK. Vanessa, hey, you guys follow Vanessa, hey. You will see her on here. She is an infertility, infertility advocate in the UK. Follow the Princess Warrior. Follow Nichelle Polston and her normal... I can't hear Jordana and we lost her. So I'm gonna wait for her to come back. Um, Regina Townsend from Broken Brown Egg is in the building. What's happening, you guys? Follow Broken Brown Egg immediately. Okay, thank you guys for telling me that you can hear me. I'm gonna wait for her to come back just to get her, her last words. So hopefully she will, she will come back on. Um, say goodbye to us. My mom says, <laughs> Mama Sue, y'all says, we're still here and I am a wreck. Don't be a wreck, mom. Your, your husband is on here. He's not able to put a comment up, but your, but your bae, your bae is on here. Um, I was just so, I, you guys know how I am, but I, I, love, a, I love a real moment where the, the real emotion of what these journeys feel like come out because that's where our healing is. Our healing is in this sharing and our healing is, being the, I'm not going to cry. Yes, I might. Being the community of women that I've met here on these Wednesdays, and every time a new person comes on here, we welcome them, we shower them with love, with flowers. I just need to say thank you to y'all for always holding this space so beautifully uh, preserved in faithfulness and testimony and protection. And, and because listen, if there's any crazy comments that goes on, trust and believe the Warriors DM me, you will get blocked. We, we don't play in Warrior Wednesday room, okay? We are the thing. So, okay, let me see if I can get her back. Jordana is on. Jordana, you might need to do the request. Did you request? Let me look, let me look, let me look, let me look. Because we gotta, we can't end without you. Come back on and press that request button again. Yes, Regina, that sisterhood, because for some reason, it won't let me request you, and I don't know why that is. I see you, but it won't let me request you. So come out, Jordana, come back and press that request button so I can see you again. Um, JoJo on the top of the screen should be a drop down. Okay, they're letting you know I love this. The Princess Warrior, yes. It's knowing we are not alone that gives us power exactly. I don't know if you guys had any questions. I'm not always on your lives, but when I come on, it's always a blessing. Thank you, Knack D Love. I appreciate it. It's a blessing to be here. I'm just waiting for Jordana. If you hop off and hop back on and request in, that way I can, um, I just want to make sure we get your last words. The devil is a liar. He really tried it, but Drake got us through. Nice for what, devil? We're not doing it. Um, isn't it strange, Broken Brown Eye says, how we end up here in the fertility world in the hopes of building family. And we end up building family. Don't start with me, Regina. That's what I'm talking about, is that some of my greatest friends I have never even met in person. And that's y'all being in this community. And I just, I just love the fact that when we witnessed Jordana have, have um, that transparent moment that we all knew what to do. We all know what to do 
because she's part of the tribe. She's part of the tribe. Here she comes. Yes, Drake got us through. He's going to get us through again. Wait a minute. I think I saw her. Sorry. No, you're good. Oh, my God. You are oh good. God, so sorry. You are good. It is fine. No, listen. The devil be trying it, but he is not. He is never going to stop us from getting it done. And you were just at the place where you were giving these beautiful last words of testimony about uh -huh. finding the doctors and, and listening to yourself. So if you could just, if you could just tell us what's on your heart. Yeah. So, I mean, sorry again, my, I, I apologize, but I think for me, I guess my phone knew I was getting too deep. Like, are you crying too much? But no, I did, no, we I did it. hear, I did hear, I mean, the tears, everything matters. Um, the journey, I wouldn't change it as much as I would like to say I, ch I would, but I don't think I would because I think I learned from it. I think my biggest lesson is listening to your body, trusting yourself and speaking to your friends and talking to, if you feel like something's not normal, be like, hey girl, do you have this issue or is this normal? And not that having the shame of it all, like, oh, you know, TMI or whatever. Now I'm all about like, I'm talking about vaginas. I'm talking about eggs. I'm, 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 I am, my friend's like, okay, girl, we get it. <laughs> Cause I'm like, no, <laughs> listen to your body because that stuff matters. You know what I'm saying? We don't, we don't get told that it's okay to ask and it's okay to, cause as I mentioned, I saw in the comments earlier, no, they work for you and they are, you know, they get, they get paid a lot of money for these surgeries. So if I'm going to be spending thousands of dollars, no, I want to make sure I have the great, the best experience. So everything from like, you know, me saying, I want this music. <laughs> I want this. I want that. I want this type of operation. I want, you know, I'm like, walk me through the procedure again. How are we going in? How are we coming out? What's that for? I'm asking, you know, cause, and I'm calling my friend like, okay, does this sound normal? I'm Googling everything. And I think you, it's, perfectly fine to be compulsive, obsessive when it comes to your health. I think that's my biggest takeaway. Say that again. Say when, that exact sentence when again. Comes, when it comes to your health, it is perfectly fine to be obsessive um, and just don't stop asking questions. You know what I'm saying? Because we get told, and I don't know, just something about going to a doctor's office is just already just like, stressful and it's annoying and it shouldn't be like that right I actually look forward to going to my doctor's office now I actually like you know what hey girl you know like right. now, <laughs> you know, I, I am reaching out to her for anything and you know um when I woke up and she told me I had 12 I was just like scared but she was like look this is what we're go gonna do this is the new plan um you know it might be a journey they might come back we don't know um and she even mentioned the fact that like there's not enough research on fibroids right now you know we gotta hold these legislators accountable because like we spend funding so much money goes to like men's health <laughs> you mm -hmm. know so much money goes to all these other things but when it comes to fibroids or when it comes to just women's health in general there's not enough funding for it. So we just need more research to understand what are they? How can we, you know, work on them and what we have to do? Because this is, uh, uh, you know, we're dealing with COVID, the COVID pandemic, but this fibroid pandemic is something that's ravishing black women. Like I am, I know that um, some people might reach out and be like, Hey, I'm doing, I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with this. And Hey, and my husband, I remember when he came to the hospital, cause you know, it was COVID um, he was allowed to stay for a couple, like, you know, whatever. And he comes in and I'm like, oh, take a picture of me. Cause you know, I love, you know, I'm taking a picture. And then he's just like, wait a minute. Did you post that picture on the gram? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, why would you do that? He's like, you're, you're, you're bold. Do you know? Like, I'm actually like surprised that you're sharing this. That's kind of like, like, no, but I'm like, yeah, because it is what it, I show the good. I, I show, you know, I, I show, oh, I'm a producer at The Daily Show. I show that, oh, you know, we're married. I show when we travel. No, this is some real life stuff. <laughs> and I'm going to share yes. that too. And I'm a survivor of it. So it's because of pages like yours, because of pages like We Can Win Right, um, those kind of pages, everybody that's on here, like I follow all, like everybody who you listed on Before Your Warrior Wednesday, I went back <laughs> and was like, let me follow this person. Follow, follow, follow. follow. <laughs> you know, because, um, it's a community and we have to just like kind of speak and uplift and it's, it's definitely 
Um, it's a lot, but you can get through it if you learn how to just speak up for yourself. And that's my biggest takeaway. Well, I thank you. I thank you for your takeaway. I thank you for your bravery. I thank you for your transparency here. Welcome to our community. You have given us so much to chew on and to be proud of. Black women, women in general are just everything that is right under the sun. And what you have done today by explaining your whole journey, even the parts of it where you said, you know, this is when I maybe should have done this or that or said this or that to the victory of knowing you had the right doctor that you could call the night before a surgery, that you could play Drake before you go under, that you could pray for in the OR. That you could, that you yes. took that yes. moment to say, this is what I need from my spirit to my body. I just want to commend you for sharing all of that with us, for being that woman. Yes. Because you freed so many people here that know that they now have a little bit more of the power from your testimony, from them hearing your story, that, hey, I remember she asked for a song. Let me, that's what I'm going to need. I'm going to need a song. Or, <laughs> hey, I remember she asked a bunch of questions, and she told me to be obsessive and compulsive about my health. And we should. And we yes. should. So Jordana has put down um, who the IG is for Dr. Camila. That is, that was your doctor in New York at Lenox Hill Hospital, correct? So my old yes, common yes, ground. Yes. Uh, I, I uh, used to live in Brooklyn for about 10 years, so I know the hospital very well, too, in New York City. But we are, we just, we bless you. You guys throw a bunch of flowers up for Jordana. Welcome to the crew. You Welcome to the Warrior Wednesday We had crew. some tennis difficulties, so I guess God was trying, I don't know, but that, that was right. What about happens is, is when we're about to put a blessing out there in the world, the devil gets angry, right? So we just didn't give up. That's all it was. <laughs> that was that's because the devil knew oh, this is going to be good. This is about to be good. And he tried yeah, to interrupt, yeah. but we are not giving up because your testimony needed to be heard. So I hope you see all the flowers and the hearts thank you guys. and thank you all, all the things. Join. I see all my friends here. So thank you guys. And, and as I said, do your research, you know, make sure, you know, she might not work out for you, but do your research and find your best doctor. So thank you guys. And thank you so much, Kelly. Like, me when I come out there, you come out here. We need drinks post Corona, but post Corona, post Corona, Corona child. Yes, <laughs> we're gonna keep it post Corona. Um, thank oh, thank you. thank you so much! I can't wait to meet you in person and when we can hug safely. And again, thank you for sharing your testimony. I want you to know you really freed somebody here today, and we so so appreciate it. And we wipe every tear, every tear that fell out of your face with love. We wipe every tear with love. Your bravery and your strength was seen by us today. So we thank, thank you for that. So I will reach out to you. We'll do more of these soon. And thank you so much for being here. All right, bye guys. Bye Kelly. Bye, thank you to Jordana Hemingway, y'all. Oh my gosh, okay. So look, the devil really did try it, but and tried it a couple times. And that's how you know that these things are meant to be and that we're meant to hear each other's stories and to share our testimony. And everybody makes their own personal decision about their health care and what doctors or what procedures or not having procedures is best for them. But what Warrior Wednesdays does, it is a community of non-judgment where we come here to share our stories, to, to share it with love, to let people know what we experienced and to help and have a hand to hold and you are not alone. So because she went under to, um, you know, I'm gonna play the song one more time as I go out. Because she went under, let's see here, to Drake. I'ma leave with Drake. And listen, y'all. So listen, this was a great Warrior Wednesday. And next Wednesday, March 31st, is my birthday. I have a warrior present for you. I'm going to be joined by some very, very beautiful sisters. Y'all will recognize every face that you see. Niecy Nash is going to hang out. Sherry Shepard's going to hang out. I'm going to get a bunch of those people to come celebrate my birthday and to give y'all, y'all, a birthday present on Warrior Wednesday. So I love y'all. 
Jordana Hemingway, thank you so much. I'm about to post this. And I love you guys. I will see you March 31st on my warrior birthday. I'll see you then. Mwah. Bye, y'all.